Thanks for joining us today on NFE SDN Reality Check. I'm your host, Dan Meyer, Editor-in-Chief at RCR Wireless News. Today we'll be discussing the latest on Etsy's NFE plans, Huawei opening up a new NFE lab, and how rumors of Google's MVNO plans could impact the virtualized space. We will also have an interview with Tom Nadal, Distinguished Engineer at Brocade. Today's episode is brought to you by TelecomCareers.com. The European Telecommunications Standards Institute recently released documents relating to the completion of Phase 1 work on establishing a framework for network function virtualization technology. The latest NFV document includes an infrastructure overview, an updated architectural framework, descriptions of the compute, hypervisor, and network domains of the infrastructure, management and orchestration, security and trust, and resilience and service quality metrics. The documents built on the initial Phase 1 work that was released in late 2013. Etsy announced last month that its NFV plans had entered Phase 2 following the completion of an organization meeting in Arizona. Phase 2 work is said to include growing interoperability across the NFV ecosystem, specifying reference points and requirements that were defined in Phase 1, growing industry engagement to ensure that its NFV requirements are met and clarifying how NFV intersects with other standards, including software-defined networking and open source initiatives. Huawei recently opened a new lab in Xi'an, China, focused on developing multi-vendor integration verification capabilities for NFV. The lab is said to be an expansion of Huawei's move to work with customers, partners, and organizations to help develop the NFV ecosystem. Partners attending the launch of the new lab included China Mobile, Dutch Telecom, VMware, Red Hat, Canonical, and, Le and the Linux Foundation. Huawei cited a number of characteristics of user behavior tied to the growth of cloud technology that is leading to greater reliance on virtualization, including demand for real-time access to information, the growth of social platforms, and increased requests for customer-controlled scalability. These characteristics are steering telecom operators towards virtualized platforms based on NFV and SDN. However, the vendor community is being challenged to meet telecom operator demands for open platforms that can operate in a multi-vendor environment. Huawei said the new lab, in addition to its previously launched Softcom network architecture, furthers its, its work in attempting to meet this challenge as it plans to build an NFE big data analysis platform to support rollout plans. Huawei said its initial phase of work will be with China Mobile, VMware, and Red Hat, but claims it is currently working with 20 operators and open source organizations like Etsy, OpenStack, OpenDaylight, and OPNFV. Huawei was also a founding member of the recently launched Open Network Operating System, which was unveiled late last year by the Open Network Lab as an open source SDN platform. Rumors recently surfaced claiming Google was in talks with Sprint and T-Mobile US to provide wireless services using a mobile virtual network operator model. The report suggests Google would be looking to undercut current pricing models that are already under pressure from recent competitive moves by mobile operators. While the rhyme or reason behind the potential Google MVNO play are still up for debate, the rumor has spiked interest across virtualization channels. Tom Noel of consulting firm CME posted a blog post that was shared across various LinkedIn groups citing how the current move by network operators to virtualize environments could make it easier for MVNOs to begin offering services. Noel explained that Google is likely to focus efforts on virtualized platforms that it's already familiar with, including SDN and NFE, and that any sort of partnership will likely involve a mobile operator working with the vendor community on virtualized platforms. However, that work could fall outside of current standards processes that so far have not outlined specific methods of dealing with platforms Google is likely looking at deploying. Noel added that a Google MVNO tapping into deeper virtualized de deployments could also boost carrier plans for NFE and SDN deployments that may result in those operators being able to deploy more advanced services that in turn could allow them to better compete against the likes of Google. Staying on the standards issues surrounding telecom virtualization, I recently spoke with Tom Nadal, who is a distinguished engineer at Brocade, about the challenges the vendor community face in terms of wanting to design solutions that meet recognized industry standards, as well as meeting the needs of their customers. Right. I mean, is that, is that kind of still a challenge, it seems like, with SDN? And, and virtualized, you know, going to the, the software uh, uh, platforms is is making sure that they are somewhat uh, ready to go. I mean, obviously, you know, we're still in a lot of the development phase and, and fine-tuning of it, but uh, it seems like the mobile operators out there and service providers are 
are really getting behind this, and and obviously, like you said, but they do want to have something that's somewhat finished that they can, you know, not worry about, you know, again, the, you know, on their network, they want to make sure they've got, you know, good reliability on the network and not any sort of issues there. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of that's still the challenge we're looking at maybe at this point is making sure that what's going out there is something that uh, operators can be comfortable and confident in in performing on their networks? Yeah, I think part of it is 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 that, right? You know, as I mentioned, you know, it's just the packaging, right? If you look at <laughs> Excuse me. If you look at some of the open source, the other open source alternatives, or the semi-open source alternatives that are out there, their packaging is is much the same. You can't just download the thing and fire it up and run. But but beyond that, um, you know, o ODL is is as a base is is probably the most robust, most complete um, package that's out there. If you look at the other ones that are out there, they're very uh, narrowly sliced. Um, in terms of what they address functionality, and that's cool if that's what you need. Um, but you know, the, the reality is is that uh, if you go into existing uh, service provider networks or existing large enterprise networks, there's a lot of gear there that you know needs to be supported for quite a while. And so that was kind of also what we found was, you know, they want to they want to you know not only dip their toe into the SDN pool, they want to jump in. But they also need the support of that old stuff, and so, you know, I think that's been the failure of a lot of the other offerings uh, over the last couple of years. It's not that they, you know, they weren't up for it. They, a lot of them, several of them actually solved the problems quite well. It's just they only solved that problem. So that was, you know, what's different about our approach. We're trying to, you know, address the existing network. Yeah, that's a good point too, because it does seem like, you know, again, these these, these providers and enterprises have all this legacy equipment in there. That they're not just going to turn off in one day. I mean, they have to throw it outside and be done with it. I mean, the stuff they have to support, supporting a lot of their their main core businesses. So they have to keep that stuff up and running. And that transition period, it seems like over the next couple of years, is probably going to be maybe even the most difficult part of, of this move towards virtualization is supporting the legacy while still advancing the the new technology and getting it in there to work together. Yeah, it is. I mean, the 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 large tier one deployment we're involved in right now, for example. That's their number one challenge that I see. You know, they're they're really embracing virtualized uh, routing and, and switching functions and and um, network functions. Um, the challenge is, you know, how to cap and grow with the old stuff, right? You need to, you not only need to have the old stuff there; it needs to keep working and it needs to be part of the plan going forward. Um, you know, for three, four, five years uh, into the future. So that's. You know that's that's really something that um, is is a great part of a product, but is also a giant you know pain <laughs> to make yeah, that sure. work. You know. Yeah, I'm sure for you guys, you know, again behind the scenes making this stuff work. I'm sure for you guys, that's uh, extra work that you know obviously. And again, you know, a lot of operators have different equipment out there, so you're having to really, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know what you guys' stuff does, but it's again trying to make it work with everything that could be possibly out there on the back end. Uh, yeah. That seems like that's uh, extra hours at work for you guys. Yeah, and it's a lot of these sort of, you know, noodly corner cases or, or testing or stuff that's really not that sexy as the end <laughs> stuff, right? It's just that, you know, nuts and bolts, all right, we've got to go through it, test it, make sure I can configure that thing, you know, you know, your traditional stuff. So, you know, and that's okay. I mean, that's that's what it takes to address that market. So that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah, makes sense. And it, I would guess, too, I mean, I know late last year, you know, here in the U.S., at and uh, came out with a, you know, kind of saying that you know their plans for SDN and NFE uh, were pretty aggressive going forward. I mean, they wanted to have a lot of their network kind of virtualized over the next three to four years. Uh, and obviously, they've been, you know, with their domain 2.0, they've been doing a lot behind the scenes anyway, or even out in front too. But mm -hmm. they kind of really seem to really set up set a marker there uh, for the industry to kind of say, hey, you know, we're behind this. Uh, this is what we're looking to do. It seemed like that was a a good uh, a boost, I'm guessing, for for you guys who are kind of working on the vendor side of things to kind of see this challenge out there and see the support from from a big company like that. Yeah, and and on the public side, right on the on the you know on the open daylight side, uh, even on Onos, you know they're supporting Onos. I think I think you know what they're doing is a sign that service providers not only you know like the technology SDN NFB, but they're getting serious about. You know, pursuing the different technical uh, solutions and then the different commercial options around those, versus a uh, you know three years ago, it was largely a wait and see, largely only a research thing. I think you're seeing pretty pretty uniformly now. If you talk to any tier one SP worldwide, um, 
they're doing something in this space uh, commercially, not just you know research-wise. Yeah, yeah, definitely get a lot more support there. It seems. Uh, well, I mean, obviously, before we before we lose you and your voice here, uh, I did want. I mean, obviously, you know, you kind of brought up open daylight onos. Uh, it does seem like that the uh, that the organizations getting behind kind of this virtualization move uh, seem to be uh, propping up on a I don't want to say daily basis, but uh, a lot of love them are out there. I mean, obviously, some of them have been around for a while. Open daylight, uh, open stack. Th th these things have been out there for a while. Uh, I guess you know, your, from your view, how helpful are these organizations? I mean, are they helping to propel the uh, unification, I guess, of kind of what we're, what we're working towards, or are we? Is it? You know, it seems to me from the outside looking in, it's kind of almost maybe too much going on. I mean, obviously, you know, everybody wants to get involved in all these organizations, but you know, if they're kind of all pulling in different directions, uh, that would seem to kind of de de kind of de deter uh, eventual the eventual goal, I guess. Well, I think I think it depends on how you look at them. I mean, there's there are some organizations which are clearly unifiers, uh, ODL, OPNFV. For example, Open NFV. These are organizations where, you know, they're bringing a variety of technologies, a variety of use cases together, and they're creating, you know, a system that that solves those problems. Some of the other organizations um, are doing a fine job, but again, they're they're either focused, you know, they're focused on a very narrow strip of the universe, and that's okay because, you know, in those cases, they push the envelope in that in that. Thin area, which is sometimes not possible in the larger organizations. There are the organizations that are supporting, you know, the sort of broader use cases, and and in a lot of cases the legacy use cases. So, if you take take Onos for example, um, and O and F before that, for example, they really didn't worry about uh, the so-called brownfield networks, you know, that have you know existing equipment, um, and that's fine. You know, they're They've been very clear about they're going after specific use cases, and and they they've done some interesting work in those spaces. Yeah, yeah, but I guess at the end of the day, as long as everybody's working towards a, perhaps a common goal or at least you know, interoperability being a key to that, I guess that's the important part of it at the end of the day. So. Yeah, and I don't think I don't think you're ever going to get a case where you know everybody's going to get together and say, okay, this is my end of the neighborhood, this is your end of the neighborhood. I mean, it's it's just the nature of how it works. There's still a lot of Thanks for joining us today on NFE SD and Reality Check, and make sure to check the rsarawireless.com website for continuing coverage on the NFE and SDN space. Also, please join us next week for more information on the NFE and SDN Reality Check. Thanks.